roughly make the views go down. Brands will come to you because editing videos takes ages. I wanted to let you in on a secret. I didn't even mean to come across this. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Kasia. I wanted to share a bit of a different video because I don't normally do this, but I wanted to dive into why growing on YouTube is kind of hard as a small YouTuber, but also how it has a lot of potential and that I am making a little bit of money, we'll talk numbers, a little bit of money from my small audience, which is literally under 5,000 views. I am working with brands. I am able to set my rates. I am able to make some extra cash. So obviously we're talking about growth. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos from me. Hello, I hope you're new to this video, this channel even. I wanted to share some things about being a small YouTuber and what kind of the possibilities are. I have my laptop here because I thought I'd share some actual numbers. Currently, my channel is at about 4.5 thousand subscribers, so 4.5 thousand subscribers. As I'm approaching 5k, which is for me a milestone accomplishment, I know that there are people that definitely just boom, 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 they can go from zero to 50k in like two months. Absolutely can happen. But there are a lot of people like me that are creating content that they enjoy, they hope their audience resonates with, but the, the growth is slow. <laughs> So I thought I would make a video kind of explaining how my channel is doing, how I've managed to reach 5k hopefully soon, how long that took me and again like what what are the limitations? What are we what are we actually working with here? There is a fly in this room and I swear to god I oh, you better get out of here because I will niching down or not to niche down. I niched down without even knowing that I was doing that. <laughs> I was creating videos, I still am, creating videos on skincare, my skin journey, my skincare routine, how to's with skin, all that stuff and I just kept going because that's what I knew and that's what I enjoyed watching and that's what I enjoyed creating so I kind of went with that. So technically this video is here out of my niche. Now what I have noticed when I come out of my niche on YouTube is that the views go down with these videos because that's not what my audience is used to seeing. That's not what is within my niche and what YouTube is used to seeing from me. I think the main thing is if it's something your audience doesn't really resonate with, doesn't connect with your niche and what your brand is, then yeah, it's likely to get less views and therefore it's le less likely to be pushed out by YouTube. And I have 90 videos. Currently, my most popular video is at 243,000 views and that was about a year ago. My trek and journey from start to finish. There is no way I would have guessed that that video would have been like top performing and would have like given me loads of adsense done really really well there was no way i would have known that i have other videos on track and knowing some of them are at like 54k from two years ago some of them are at like 23k from a year ago generally they're pretty well performing but i just would not have thought that that one would have been at like nearly a quarter of a million views i really think the thing that people don't tell you about youtube is that it's so hard to pinpoint what people will be looking for. So for me, I'm not even gonna bother getting all my, I know pretty much my analytics off by heart. I know that easily 80% of my views come from search. So people searching for that particular topic. So if I am creating a video on literally titled Casey's Daily Makeup, People aren't going to be searching that. Maybe daily makeup could go into it, but that exact thing is not what people are searching for. In terms of the skincare, I know that I know what I search. So I know that I'm looking for tretinoin, one month, six months, three months. I want to see the progress. I want to know what I'm getting myself into using this um, retinoid that I've been prescribed. How's my skin going to react? Is it a similar journey to this girl? Is my skin kind of flaking like hers is? That's what I wanted to do. And I was doing that without even really like having to think deeply about it but it depends what you personally are creating videos on and oh my god i swear to god this fly needs to no flies were killed in the making of this video i really wanted to sort of say here that hey if you are a small youtuber or if you are you've just created a youtube channel maybe it's growing quite slowly don't be so hard on yourself because there the possibilities are there okay so the possibilities for me have definitely been the fact that Brands have wanted to work with me even with like 3,000 or less subscribers. Why? Because I have a solid niche that actually can help with the branding. 
here is my first piece of advice. Yes, niche down as much as you can, but it doesn't have to be like, I'm only gonna create this very, very specific type of video. The reason why is, I did not do this on purpose, by the way, I'm speaking from, okay, I learned this. Brands will come to you because you do this specific thing. I have worked with a really good amount of brands. I've had paid work, like paid, like actual money, asking for my rates. And don't get me wrong, I definitely had deals that are just, you know, they gift me a product and I share it for free. And that, I'm not, I, I like that too. I don't hate it, I don't mind. But the niching down has helped. Why? Because it's all within the same thing. For me, that is skincare. <laughs> So let's talk some numbers, okay? So I am a channel of, let's let's just round it up to 5,000 subscribers. Hopefully, if this video goes out, I'm close, please. Um, but 5,000 subscribers, not a lot in the grand scheme of things, although I am proud of myself and I will take that as a win. I'm managing to work with brands. So I'm gonna be talking in pounds here, but I'll put USD on the screen. I don't think I'm actually gonna share the screen, but just trust my word. Right, so last, no, we want the, let's do a lifetime. So this will be the whole time that I've had YouTube, which my first video, when was my first video? I believe my first video was October 2019. That's what I believe. Anyway, since then, I have obviously created 90 videos in total, and that has got me 1.1 million views, 55.7 hours of watch time, as in 55,700. Obviously the 4.5 subscribers and money. So this is just money from AdSense, from all the ads I have on those videos. 2,534 pounds and 65p. Put that in USD up here. So here is a screenshot of the money made on my channel so far. However, almost half of this money came from one specific video, my top performing video. And that also goes to show that there is chance to it because even with the money, it's been made mostly from one vid. So let me put it this way. I make videos as a hobby. Currently it's the weekend, I'm filming this video. I don't know how it's gonna perform. I've not researched this topic before. I've not really, I'm not taking it 100% serious, hardcore. I'm gonna make it, this is gonna be my platform. As much as I'd love to, I like to have a balance. I like to, yes, create the life I want on the weekends, but I also want to enjoy the life I have on the weekends. And then during the week, I am very much working and I like to relax in the evenings. Although I will do a bit of um, editing. Editing videos takes ages. But that money, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. That's not bad. And then plus brand deals, so... I probably make like 120 pounds a month from AdSense, which isn't bad. So that's just from ads. And that's on my current videos, my past videos, my top performing videos that add revenue from that, which I, I'm quite, that's after tax. Then in terms of brands, I personally am affiliated with a couple of brands. That fluctuates. Some months I make a, like a, a really good amount. Some months I literally, like this month, one of my affiliated brands that I work with, I made like 20 pounds, which is not, not a lot at all. But other months with that brand, I have made like 60, 75, 100 pounds. So that's a bit of extra cash. So I'm gonna roughly calculate, go with the 120 for AdSense plus a good month. So roughly on a good month, that's 295 pounds that would be coming into my bank account from making videos on the side within my free time without putting the most pressure on myself. I think that's good. I personally think that's good for less than 5,000 subscribers. If I was to take it fully seriously, I think I would have to upload a lot more videos. So let's put it this way. The more videos that you can get out there, not only is it more likely that those videos are gonna be seen, so more watch time, more possibility of people sticking around and subscribing, that's great. But also the money that comes with that. The more videos that you're creating, the more ads you can add to those videos, therefore the more money you get. But this is where I think a balance needs to come in because yeah, I would love to do three videos a week, but the editing time alone for one video is actually unreal. Like it's actually six to eight hours. Like when I used to hear YouTubers saying this, I'm like, oh, maybe you're slow at editing, honey, or okay, 
but no, it, it takes long. It, even if you're advanced, so for me, at under 5,000 subscribers, I would roughly make a range monthly between 100 to 2, let's stick at 250. If it's done better, then that's because I did better with affiliates or the brands would just, you know, come in that month. But yeah, that is pretty much what I'm making. I really do think there is luck to it because half these videos that have done really well, I can't necessarily tell you I did this exact thing and that's what, because otherwise I'd be doing it over and over and over and I'd be rinsing that and I'd be getting a load of views and a load of subscribers. Personally, I had an, an issue, is it an issue? I don't know. But in order to get monetized on YouTube, you need to have 4,000 hours of watch time and 1,000 subscribers. My problem was, for a lot of people, they usually struggle to get the watch time. I had the watch time almost instantly. Like, it just came so quick within months of being on YouTube. But the subscribers, you guys just didn't want to subscribe. Well, I've got the watch time to be monetized, but people aren't subscribing to my channel. Why? And you probably heard this before, but you have to ask people to subscribe. You have to ask, you have to put it on the screen, because otherwise people just don't. I wanted to let you in on a secret that I didn't even, I didn't even mean to come across this, like it just happened. So maybe Google Trends is helpful, I don't know. If this was like a thing that was super easy, obviously I would do it all the time, but it's really hard to actually see what's gonna be trending next, like I cannot forecast that. But that is how I learned that one of my videos, what is it called? Um, removing sebaceous filaments was an oil cleansing video that I did. 177,000 views, but honestly, when it was like, when it was blowing up and everything, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, what? Like, how? Later, much, much later, when I was looking into Google Trends, trying to figure out what videos I'm gonna be making next. By the way, I don't really do that because it's really hard, like I said, to determine what trend is next and what I can kind of create. But when I was doing that, and I saw when oil cleansing spiked and like peaked, this here is Google Trends for the search term oil cleansing. I've put the year 2004 to present, but we're gonna be focused on 2020 because that is when I uploaded the video. Specifically this peak and spike right here, you can see when it was being most searched, June 2020. Was literally when I had posted that video. And that was by pure chance, pure chance, because I had not known that prior. I hadn't like been keeping up with trends and knew this video was gonna like absolutely go off. Like I didn't, because to me, if, it, if I could predict more trends and see like, oh, this is when this is gonna peak, I will make a video exactly then, um, it would be so much easier. <laughs> I'm sure I'd have a lot more videos with good, like amazing views, but it's not so easy to do that. But I mean, it's worth a try. It depends on your niche, depends what you create, maybe look into that. There are definitely elements of chance. Those people that just blow up and blow up, elements of chance. But that does not take away from the work and effort that needs to go in, like in terms of a good thumbnail, in terms of keywords, title, description. I feel like there is definitely toxic hustle culture of you need to do the most all the time, be on it, do your free videos a week, push it, be on every social media platform, be creating the best content. But the reality is that is simply just gonna lead to burnout and just don't be so hard on yourself. Like you're doing amazing if you're creating content. You don't have to put so much pressure on yourself that as much as I would love for social media to be a full-time thing, it's not click your fingers overnight and that happens. It does happen for some people, but it's, it's a rarity. If anything, I'm kind of enjoying the ride. I'm kind of enjoying being able to actually respond to pretty much every comment, being able to get to know my audience. I know the people that comment on various videos, like I know you, I know your name, it's just, it's a journey and as much as I want to rant about the fact that it's tough and some people don't understand the effort that goes into the filming, the videos, when a video flops, like I'm talking like less than 200 views, it's like, ah, oh, that sucks. It does. But it's like, well, did I enjoy filming that video? Yes. Did I enjoy editing it? Yes. Did I want to put that online and have it as part of my, I consider my YouTube channel as my portfolio. Did I want that? Yes. Then it was worth it. Yes, it was worth it. When we're looking at my channel and I go through all my thumbnails and I'm just scrolling through my channel, I'm like, I'm actually proud that I have put the dedication that goes into that. If you know other people that are creating content, whether you are also involved in it or not, support them. So I do feel like you can definitely 
make a decent amount as a small YouTuber. And if you are able to put more time and effort into your videos, then yes, I think that money will also slowly creep up. So listen, if you are a small content creator, keep doing what you're doing, stick at it. I think the biggest thing that keeps me going is the fact that I enjoy this. Like I said, it's my portfolio. I want to see it grow. I want to see my skills develop. I enjoy it. If this video has reached the right people, please let me know if you want me to share how I plan my content or anything behind the scenes. Leave me a comment. That would be greatly appreciated. And I really hope to see you on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe down below and I will see you guys soon.